The Apple event WWDC has just finished and I want to talk about macOS because that's what I love to run. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Commun, I uncover Apple tech as well as Apple related tech. So hit that subscribe button and that like button if that's what you're into. But today I'm gonna uncover Mac OS Monterey, which is the new Mac OS operating system for Macs. So I've made some notes here on the iPad, so sorry if I keep looking over, but the Apple event literally just finished and I'm trying to get this video out as quickly as possible. But anyway, there are a few updates that have not just come to macOS Monterey, but also iPadOS and iPhoneOS. So let me talk about those first. Beginning with FaceTime, we now see spatial audio coming to FaceTime. So what this means is that now you'll be able to hear different people like it's in a room if you're in a group chat. So essentially, if you've got someone talking in the left side of the group chat, and then you've got someone talking in the right side of the FaceTime group call, now you're able to actually hear those conversations like it was happening in person. And for the group to listen in to you, you now have two microphone options. So you've got voice isolation and wide spectrum. So with voice isolation that allows the microphones to pinpoint your voice and cancel out all the other noise around you so that obviously people can hear you easily. And then you've also got wide spectrum which basically just is the normal mode. I wish I could be there. Me too. Let me fix this. Better right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she wanted for her birthday. A feature that I'm really excited for is portrait mode on FaceTime. So what this allows is a blurry background during your FaceTimes, which is gonna make things look a little bit more uh, professional. Plus if you've got a lot of stuff around and you need an important FaceTime call uh, to be had, then you're able to do so. Plus it focuses the um, sort of conversation on you rather than obviously what's happening in the background. One thing that I'm really excited to see in a sort of commercial setting is actually FaceTime links. So what FaceTime links is, is it allows you to actually schedule FaceTime calls and share those links with other users, not just, and this is the big thing, not just for iOS users or anything like that, or macOS users, you can now send links to Android users and they're able to use their uh, web browser to actually interact with that FaceTime call and use FaceTime calls uh, as part of their Android ecosystem. But one thing that I want to share with you today is our sponsor, and that is Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac X is one of the first applications I install on my Macs, and now is optimized for Apple Silicon and M1. Honestly, it's a lifesaver. It cleans up all my junk files from my SSDs that even I can't find. It is not only a macOS cleaner, but it's also a performance improver and malware remover. A feature that I use a lot is the Free Up Purgeable Space tool, which honestly frees up tens of gigabytes on my Macs, which is vital when Apple gives you so little to start with. Download this and you'll never want to use a Mac without it. Go check out the link down in the description below and thank you again for Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this part of the video. They also introduced a thing called SharePlay. So this allows your music, videos, and even your screen to be shared during the FaceTime call, which is honestly gonna be game changing for me because the amount of times, especially for that screen sharing, the amount of times that I wanted to share my screen but wasn't able to do so. So for example, when you're trying to shop for things or, or whatever, and you're trying to have that conversation with your friend and you're trying to show them you know, what you're looking at or whatever, well now you can share your screen. And for other people like friends and family, I'm able to now watch a movie and share that experience with my friends and family. And not only that, but you, if you didn't want to obviously watch that movie on your FaceTime call, on your phone. You can now stream it on your Apple TV and then those uh, family or friends members can still watch it on their devices but you can experience it in obviously a much better uh, uh, situation or scenery than those obviously on the iPhone. Now the SharePlay feature obviously needs to be enabled by developers but there are a few big names like Disney Plus and HBO Max and I know obviously Netflix will be jumping on this as soon as they get their hands on the API. So when you're using your Mac there might be different situations where you might be using it for work or leisure or home or whatever it may be and normally you have different settings uh, corresponding to those different modes. 
So when you're at work, you might have, you know, do not disturb on and stuff like that. Whereas when you're at home, you want to see all your notifications and, and everything. So now you have this new focus feature, which gives you a set of different focus scenes, as they like to call it. And it basically allows you to have different notifications and apps and home screens and stuff like that that is available in those different scenes and will be automatically synced to your other devices, meaning that you won't have to set different focus modes for each of your Apple devices, which is really good. So if you set one for your iPhone, that will automatically translate to your iMac and MacBooks and stuff like that, which is a fantastic feature for me because there's always a different mode that I'm always in, whether I'm at work, sometimes I just don't want to see those notifications. I just need to focus on, let's say, that video edit. Whereas when I'm using it for leisure, I just want to see all those notifications come in and deal with them as and when. So a lot of Mac users love the Safari browser and the Mail app, and why not? Safari is super fast and the Mail app is super easy to use. So with the Mail app, if you don't know, when you sometimes open up an email from, let's say, a marketer or anything like that, what can actually tend to happen is that there are these things called hidden pixels where they try to grab your location IP address and try to figure out what your uh, spending habits and, and surfing habits are like. Well, now with the new mail app privacy settings, it will now hide your IP address and your location settings. And sometimes in those marketing emails, like when it tells you, you know, that there's a new sofa deal or whatever it may be, in those emails, there are hidden sort of information where it sends back to those marketers, letting you know that you've, e you know, opened that email and stuff like that. Well, now uh, the new mail app will hide that uh, send back. And those features regarding the hiding your IP address and location, well, Safari will now do that as well. So rather than you having to rely on a, an, a VPN to do those things, well, now Safari will do that built in, which is just incredible. Now, does that mean that you should ditch your VPN? Well, Obviously not, VPNs have their place, and there are many reasons why you would use a VPN, but it's nice to see that Safari now has this built into its browser. So it means that people who don't have VPNs won't be locked out of this uh, benefit. And while we're on the topic of Safari, they have done a few cool changes. First of all, with the design. So the design is a lot more slimmed down and is a lot more intuitive to use. I mean, Safari was one of the best looking browsers out there anyway, but now it's even cleaner and more minimal without losing any of its functionality. They've also introduced this thing called tab groups. So you know how you would normally have, uh, you know, let's say five or six or 10 sometimes tabs open at the same time. And normally you do that every time, let's say you start uh, work or anything like that. And it's quite annoying that you're having to do that every single time. With tab groups, you can save those 10 tabs and save it in a tab group, which is gonna be accessible, not just on your Mac, but on all your devices. So rather than having to, do that process every single time of opening every single website. You can now share that tab group across all your devices and just press one button and you have access to all of your favorite websites or most used websites. And lastly, for Safari, you know those extensions that you have on your macOS Safari browser? Well, now they will be extended to iPad and iOS. So it means that all those favorite extensions that you normally use on your Macs, well now you're not gonna be missing them out on your iPad or iPhone. So now let's talk about the continuity updates because this is pretty incredible and honestly, in my opinion, game-changing. So first, let's talk about universal control. So universal control allows you to have your Mac uh, keyboard, mouse, trackpad, whatever it may be, and you're able to move that from, let's say, let's say you're using your mouse on your iMac and then you want to use it on your iPad. Well, they showed off that you can move your cursor across to your iPad and start using your mouse or trackpad on your iPad as if it was connected directly. And then you can move it back to your uh, Mac or whatever and use it like normal. So this is actually incredible because the amount of times you have to, you know, if you wanted to, let's say, use your Mac uh, keyboard or uh, mouse on your iPad, you actually have to unpair them from your Mac and then pair them up to your uh, iPad. And that was just super frustrating. Well, now I don't need to worry about that. I could literally be working off this screen and then work on this screen just by using a single set of keyboard and mouse. And this works across all the devices. So with iMac, MacBook, 
and iPad. And you can have all three devices connected using just a single um, Apple keyboard and Apple mouse or trackpad. And it gets even better because let's say I've got a file on my iPad and I want to drag it over to my iMac. Well, normally I would just use AirDrop, which is fantastic. But now using the mouse, I can just simply drag it over, move it over to the iMac with just a simple click. Like that, honestly, like I'm actually so excited for that because the amount of times I'm using different Apple devices and I just want to use, you know, a file from here and just move it onto here. Well, now it's going to be so easy, especially creating YouTube videos and stuff like that when I'm, you know, screen recording on one Mac and then want to move it over to a more powerful Mac. The amount of times I'm having to use AirDrop and stuff like that, well, now I can just click and drag. That is honestly a feature I'm so excited about. Honestly, I can't wait for this. Like this is just an awesome feature. And I am definitely going to be downloading the beta software, which just to let you know, the beta software for Mac OS is uh, coming to the public next week. Whereas if you're an Apple developer or have the App Apple developer subscription like I do, you can actually download it today. And finally, let's talk about AirPlay because this is coming to Mac OS. Yes, so now if you've got a movie or picture or whatever it may be on your uh, iPad or iPhone or you're trying to share your screen, you can now share it on your iMac or MacBook or Mac Mini. It is so easy now because before, if let's say I was watching a movie and then I wanted to let's say watch it on my iMac screen, like a lot of uh, dorm students do, you know, sometimes their computer is their TV. And sometimes they're watching on their iPhone. And they're like, actually, I want to watch it on my iMac now. Well, before you had to log in or go into your browser, log into Disney Plus or whatever it may be, and then play it from there. Well, now it's going to be seamless because now I can just press a button and it will show up on the iMac like that. And that is available across all macOS devices. So that was my roundup and key features of macOS Monterey. In my opinion, this was the most exciting uh, OS launch uh, in the WWDC event this year. I mean, iPadOS was just super disappointing. I mean, you're going to see it on all sorts of channels, but honestly, a lot of the features uh, on I iPadOS that we were expecting just did not come. I don't even know what noteworthy updates they actually did, except for maybe that Swift uh, update coming to iPadOS. But apart from that, everything else was very disappointing for iPads. Uh, when it came to watchOS and iPhone, uh, yeah, they they were pretty cool. I mean, the key feature for watchOS for me was the fact that I could edit text now using uh, Siri, whereas before you couldn't. If you made a mistake, that was it. Um, but yeah, for me, macOS Monterey was the most exciting, and I cannot wait to download the betas and just try some of these features out. Remember, guys, to check out the links down in the description to support the channel. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarMoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. There are two videos right over here. Go ahead, click them. You'll absolutely enjoy them, I promise you. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.